Hello everyone, welcome to G-Centric. So in this lecture, we will start with our new chapter that is graph theory. Okay, so this is uh, not so important with gate point of view. Okay, that is because there is only like a very low chances of asking in the gate examination. But if you consider EAC or ISRO or BARC exam, these type of questions may be asked. Okay, for one mark or two mark in the examination section. Now, here we have got some terminologies related to graph theory. Okay, so uh, whatever in the network theory we have learned up to two ports network, it's very very important. After that, whatever it is there, that those are all like subtopics. If you leave and go also, still you can qualify the get exam. Okay, so now here you have seen this. Here is a circuit. Okay, see now uh, this graph theory is basically used only for you know making our calculations very easy instead of making it calculations by hand we can solve up to three variables right but when the variables cross three it will be very very difficult to solve the equations okay that's why we use something called as matrix which we can uh, simulate in computer okay using the matlab software right so that's why we First of all, learn this graph theory. This is learned by EC, electrical, then instrumentation as well as for the computer science also. Okay, so through which we will, you know, uh, analyze the equations and then put back into the MATLAB so that we will get the equations or answers for those uh, variables directly. So coming to this one, you see a voltage source, current source and fundamental elements. Okay, so this is the L. So now, there are rules to draw the graph of this circuit okay and first rule is okay first rule is to identify the nodes okay identify the nodes so basically what are nodes more than one branch should be connected to that node okay so now here i can see a let me call this as a node this is b this is c and this is d okay so these are the four nodes right so here also in the terminology we have number of nodes or vertices basically more than one branch should be connected to that point okay so these are four it is also called as vertices so be thorough with the naming okay for the terminology so that you do not get confused if they ask what are the edges or what are the vertices okay so first rule is to identify the nodes next second rule is whether it is R, L, C or voltage source, okay, you have to short circuit them, okay, short circuit. Okay, third rule is if you have current source, make it open circuit, okay. So now here I will draw the graph for this one. First let me put these three nodes over here. Okay, and here is the D node. Okay, so this is A, B, C and D. Okay, so A to B we have a resistor for which we have to short circuit. Right, then from B to C we have one more resistor. Okay, then we have B to D inductor and A to D we have voltage source which is also a short circuit path. C to D there is a capacitor as well as the current source so for current source it is open circuit right so you can draw or you cannot you can leave it just like that okay it's understood that it's an open circuit path okay next from a to c we have one more resistor okay so this is the graph that we have got from this one now if you see over here one two three four five six there are six branches but here there are seven branches Okay, count it here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so this you do not, do not count this one. That's a reference node. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. Okay, right? 3, 6, yeah. 7 including the current source. Right? So, basically number of branches either it will be equal to the main circuit or less than that. Okay, so here in the terminology section it goes number of branches is or edges okay we'll call this as edges also it is six fine next this type of graph where there are no directions okay there is no direction of current going over here or coming here okay there are no arrows in between the branches so we will call this as non 
oriented graph okay it does not give any knowledge about the direction but if you put the directions okay suppose if this is like this this is coming over here okay let us call this as 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 then when you have got this type of direction then it is called as oriented graph okay this is the oriented graph if if the arrows were not present then it is non oriented graph so coming over here what is mean by number of node pair okay so basically in between two nodes there should be one branch that we will call it as node pair okay here we can see that ab okay ad then ac bd bc okay cd okay these are all the node pairs next what is the degree of node degree of node is nothing but we have got here four nodes right a b c and d from each node how much branches are outgoing that we will write here okay if this is a node we can see one two three there are three branches connected to this a node okay similarly with b one two and three c one two one two and three d here also it is 3. Okay. So, this is about the degree of node. Next, we will see some of the definitions related to this. Okay. Completed graph, non-completed graph. We will see here. Let me rub this one. Okay. So, coming to the terminologies for the graph theory. First, we have got a completed graph. So, what does this completed graph means? Only one branch between two nodes should be present okay otherwise number of branches completed for graph is nc2 so we'll come to this definition here how we will calculate number of branches it's basically using this formula nc2 that's the combination formula so n into n minus 1 divided by 2 2 2 factorial it will be 2 into 1 so number of nodes we had 4 4 minus 1 by 2 right 3 4 are 12 12 by 2 so it is six branches what we had got in our graph here right count here 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 okay so this is a formula for used for calculating number of branches in a completed graph so now what do we mean by completed graph it says only one branch between two nodes should be present okay so if this is node a b c and d okay see here between two nodes there is only one branch okay then it means it's a completed branch right completed graph see here for all the two nodes in between two nodes there is only one branch suppose if it is like this then it is not called as a completed branch okay because a and d has got two branches in the graph so it's not completed it will be non-completed graph okay so that that is what it's mean by this definition next subgraph it is nothing but the subset of nodes and branches of the main graph okay here you can have if it's like this okay you can draw this way this way also and this way also okay it's just it is subset of this main graph okay it it has got branches and nodes of this main graph okay I, it can form loop or it cannot form loop that's not a problem okay that is what subset now spanning of subgraph what does this mean if subgraph contains all the nodes of main graph what it says if you are drawing the subgraph of the main graph okay it should have all its nodes connected without forming the loop okay without forming the loop okay i sorry that's not the case all the nodes of main graph okay so it's not the nodes this definition will be for tree without forming a loop is for the tree okay so it it we have got here four types of graphs oh sorry four nodes which has got its nodes of the main graph okay a b c and d let us name it this as a b c and d now if subgraph contains all the nodes of the main graph so if i can connect like this right okay See here, it, all the graphs are connected, okay, oh, sorry, all the nodes are connected and it is the subgraph of main graph, okay. So, this is the important thing. You should, it should not be a main graph, it should be a subgraph but containing all the nodes, okay. Next, 
at uh, connected graph at least one branch between the two nodes should be present okay so now if i take like this here is c and a b d these there is one branch in between these two nodes but here for this c it is an isolated node okay so this is non connected graph okay so if you connect this also it will be a connected graph because all the nodes that you have selected is connected with each other okay so this is about the connected graph next it's a very important topic that is tree and cotree okay here i have written the definition of the tree what does it say maximum number of branches that can be connected without forming a loop okay it should not a it should not form a loop you have to draw in that way and which is called as tree of the main graph now okay it should contain all the nodes as well okay so this is a b c and d i will draw here first type of tree okay it should not form the loop okay here is this one i can do this one right and i can connect this like this right i can draw this is not this is there is no loop forming over here but if i join this there will be a loop or if i join this also there will be a loop and here also it will be a loop if i draw that line okay this is one type of tree next i can draw the reverse of this one okay this is second you can draw any number of trees okay now if i take this way this is also tree okay next if i draw like this like this and come down okay fifth i can draw reverse of this one okay here in this way okay this is also tree so whatever solid lines you are okay first we will complete this graph how do we complete this one this is over this is for tree okay definition of tree now how do you find the cotree you have to complete this with the dotted line which resembles the main graph okay so i will draw over here okay this is with a dotted line the other half of the tree is called cotree whatever is left to find uh, to form the main graph that is the dotted line which we will call it as cotree okay here also we will complete this one okay yes so now the solid lines okay the solid lines they are called as twigs okay this is a twig this is a twig and this is a twig through twigs we will form trees right through twigs only we are going to form the trees okay and this dotted line is called as link and joining these links will give me cotree okay single dotted branch is called as link and through links there are multiple links over here through which cotree is formed similarly here this branch is called as solid branch is called as twig through these twigs we are going to form the tree okay so that is the definition of link cotree twigs and tree okay so this is about the trees and cotrees here also this is called as twigs and this is called as links okay links this is twigs now there is a formula to find number of twigs okay as well as there is a formula to find number of twigs and links okay the formula is first of all we will write for number of twigs okay number of twigs is equal to nodes minus 1 okay so we have got here four nodes and if we minus 1 we will get three twigs see over here 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 and 3 1 2 3 1 2 and 3 so these are twigs 
right so similarly we have the formula to find the number of links okay and the formula is k number of links is equal to b minus n plus 1 okay bray for branches n for nodes and 1 okay so how many branches we have basically six branches are there 6 minus 4 is 2 2 plus 1 is 3 okay 1 2 3 1 2 3 in every graph we will get three links and three twigs basically if you draw twigs the leftover branches to complete the main graph will give you number of links if you do not know this formula also okay so this is about the tree and co tree next we are going to learn about the tie set matrix cut set matrix or incidence matrix how we are going to get this one okay so this is non oriented graph and if you put uh, put the arrows like this you will get the oriented graph okay through oriented graph only we will draw the matrices matrices okay so we will see in the next lecture thank you